we humans are 7.5 billion people on earth each of us different in so many ways but there's one thing we share the sense of being alive right now in this particular moment or at least that's what it feels like but while right now seems like the most intuitive feeling is right now right now or is it already past now ontology is the philosophical study of being more aptly it studies the concepts related to existence and reality some of the principal questions of ontologies include what is the meaning of being what can be said to exist what is a thing the first ever such study features in the samkhya school of hindu philosophy back in first millennium bc eternalism is a philosophical approach to the ontological nature of time according to eternalism or the block universe theory the time is just an illusion that our brains merely perceive to be moving forward in a linear fashion dr christy miller the joint director of the center for time at the university of sydney posits that our universe is a giant four dimensional block of space time containing within it all that has ever happened in the past and everything that will happen in the future together so the past the present and the future all coexist now in this very moment it is opposed to the notion of presentism which states that the past continuously fades as the present keeps on happening so what happens if you were to say travel at the speed of light wait is the speed of light the fastest achievable speed in the universe well technically the answer is yes but the rules change for the universe in itself to understand that let's frame the question ontologically does light experience time light is made up of massless elementary particle called photon the speed of photon in vacuum is 299792.458 kilometers per second or roughly about 300000 kilometers per second now that's the absolute hard limit of speed that anything in this universe can travel at let's say for the sake of a thought experiment we wanted to travel to some distant point in space we shot ourselves out of the earth's atmosphere and started increasing the speed faster and faster approaching the speed of light according to the einstein's theory of general relativity our clocks would significantly slow down with respect to any observer back on earth as we keep approaching the speed of light the closer and closer we get to it the lesser the time we experience and the shorter the distance we experience at the speed of light these values approach zero but of course to be able to do that our masses and the energy required to travel at such speeds would have to approach infinity which is impossible for us but for light itself the photons which are massless travels zero distance and zero time so as an observer the journey that could take photons billions of light years in the vast expanse of space was for a photon no different than jumping from atom to atom so this property of general relativity is why a muon an unstable particle created just about 100 kilometers above the earth's surface or 60 to miles above the earth's surface reaches the surface of earth successfully within its lifetime of just about 2.2 microsecond consider this classically a muon traveling at the speed of light would only be able to reach about 0.6 kilometers or half a kilometer within its lifetime and decay but as it approaches the speed of light the time and distance significantly decreases because of which when you hold out your hand about 1 muon passes through it every second so absolutely nothing nothing can escape the speed of light but what about the space time of the universe in itself edwin hubble an american astronomer and yes that hubble after which is named one of the nasa's great observatories the hubble space telescope made an interesting observation in 1920 that the farther away we look in the universe the faster the galaxy seem to move away from us this law came to be known as the hubble law or the law governing the expansion of the universe according to the general relativity the space itself evolves over time so as the universe keeps expanding the rate at which the objects move farther away from each other exceeds the speed of light itself so as of now the photons that were emitted 14 to 15 billion light years ago will never reach us even at the speed of light so the universe we see now seems to sort of disappear so the earth gets more and more lonelier over time so what does eternalism or the block universe theory really mean when it comes to time travel say if you were to travel to the speed of light and you were to be able to create a wormhole to reach to a distant location in space time you cannot affect your present by changing the past that's because the present exists at the same time as the past 
This supports the notion of predeterminism, which is that everything is preordained and that the individual has no influence over the outcome of their life and just as well may let it run its course. So, say if you were to travel to the past, you are a part of the past. More importantly, you were always a part of the past. By going to the past, you simply fulfilled a preordained action that was already written down in the block of space-time. Now, how is that for free will? As we know, everything takes time. Even light cannot exceed the expansion into the fabric of space. And so does the human thought. So the right now that we are experiencing inside our skulls is ever so slightly delayed than what's going on in the outside world. It takes about 500 milliseconds or about half a second for the sensory information from the outside world to make it our conscious experience. But there are different kinds of thoughts and they can vary significantly upon the time scales from 150 milliseconds to a second to even a few seconds. So it begs a question as to what is a thought? How do we define a thought? Here, a thought includes processes related to perception, which is what is in the environment and where, decision making, which is what to do, and action planning, how to do it. The distinction between these processes and the independence of each of them is quite blurry. And while each of these processes has several subcomponents, perhaps even those subcomponents could be considered thoughts on their own. To make things even more complicated, different senses operate at different speeds. So to create a unified experience of what is right now, our brain has to delay some of them in order to stitch them seamlessly to make it our conscious experience. So in essence, the future has already happened. We are just not aware of it yet. But how does your brain process your thoughts when suddenly out of nowhere, a tiger leaps out of the bushes at you? If you happen to perceive the situation consciously and reason through a response, you would be long dead. Fortunately for us, the brain has several layers of emergency response circuitry called reflexes. The fastest of them is called a startle reflex. Say if you're walking alone and you hear a loud noise, your ears will trigger an extremely simple chain of just three neurons that connects the spinal cord and the brain stem. Within about five milliseconds, hundreds of muscles are recruited into the self-defense reaction. So before you could even comprehend what happened, your reflex would have already kicked in. So what happens when incidents, sometimes fatal or near fatal, occurs within a blink of an eye? If you have ever been in a tragic or a near fatal incident, Chances are that you would remember everything, as if everything happened ever so slowly. And you were aware of your entire surroundings, like the dogs barking, the birds chirping on a nearby pine tree, the black SUV that slowed down its pace. Your exact thoughts of what was happening, how it was happening, and how you could have saved yourself all the while you were in the process of, say, ruthlessly falling down. How is it that the time seemed to have slowed down, so much so that you remember everything significantly better then say what you wore yesterday while visiting the nearby grocery store. Did the time really slow down? What you were experiencing in that moment was a psychological phenomenon known as subjective time dilation. And no, not the same time dilation that occurs when you're near a black hole, but a strange elasticity in time that often accompanies moments of acute danger. The brain estimates the passage of time by the amount of information stored within a given interval. So the richer the memories, the more the time seems to have elapsed. What this tells us is that our brains do not speed up when we're in danger. Instead, the rush of your hormones causes the brain to retain richer memories. This is very similar to a flash bulb effect or flash bulb memory that enables us to remember every color, sound and smell of an emotionally powerful event. It's very useful from an evolutionary perspective. Say if you were to survive a life or death encounter, it's obviously very helpful to know exactly how you did it and retain that at the right time. So the speed of thought is obviously slower than the speed of light under the context that we are yet to fully understand and define our thought. But the upside or the downside, whatever we choose to call it, is that anything that we do within a span of less than half a second, like improvising a lyric, catching a stranger's glance, hitting a fast ball, we do so entirely through an automated circuitry rather than a conscious, reasoned decision. For all the wonders that the human consciousness has brought into the world, some of the best things we do, we do so without it. And as always, lights out!